Well, it's good to be in church, amen? I'm excited for the pastor being down there in Mexico. Uh, it's always a joy to me when I get to go to other places and preach and speak about my Savior, Jesus Christ. I did joke with him a little bit before the service, um, you know, since I have the mic, I guess I can say something here, <laughs> and that way you can tease him when he comes home, see, but um, he's, he's kind of a picky eater, and uh, when, we, when we got down to, uh, the, when we went to the Philippines together, you know, he wanted to have certain things every day, and we went to this one place, and, and the Philippines is, is very westernized. You can go there. You can go to McDonald's. You can go to Burger King. You can go to um, Kentucky Fried Chicken. You do whatever you want to do that way. So you're not really trapped. Well, we went to this pizza place, and uh, it was pretty good. So uh, later in the week, uh, one of the pastors took us out to eat again at the pizza place, and we ordered these appetizers, and um, we ordered uh, cheese sticks and some, some fish, fish nuggets and, and some onion rings, and along with the pizza. And uh, we, we got about halfway into it, and I said, uh, Pastor, how, how, do you, how do you like the appetizer? It's like, oh, it's... It's pretty good, but these onion rings are really chewy. And I said, well, they're not onion rings. <laughs> they're squid. <laughs> and right away, he went, <laughs> <laughs> And so we joked about that for a long time. And, uh, but then later in the week, when, when, you go, when you go to the Philippines, they always, they always tell you, when you go there, don't eat the balut. Don't eat the balut. Don't eat the balut. Who, who knows? Does anyone know? Okay, this guy, and of course my wife, knows what balut is. And uh, what it is, it's, it's an it's a egg with the, with the chick still in it. And you eat that. And so I was planning on eating the balut before I left because Mrs. Kawila, you know, our missionary here, she said, Oh, Dr. Yoder, my children eat it, and I eat it, and it's so delicious, and I'll help you eat it, too. I'm like, okay, great. Well, the night before I was going to eat the balut, we, we went to uh, a 7-Eleven late at night, and I got a roller dog. <laughs> and I got sick from eating that roller dog. <laughs> and so now, Pastor, he, I, I tease him about eating the squid, and he teases me about eating a roller dog at 7-Eleven. <laughs> So it all comes out to about even, but uh, I, I'm glad that he's there, and um, it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing that we have a mission-minded church the way that we do. Um, that's uh, a wonderful thing, and uh, I, I wanted to preach about that tonight a little bit, but the Lord led me kind of in a different direction. Uh, my wife and I, we, we, we still are on deputation. Um, we had services last week, um, not this past weekend, but the one before that. We were in missions conference at two different churches, and the Lord is continuing to bless. Things are going kind of uh, slow, but um, we're, just, we're just happy to be serving the Lord in any capacity. And uh, those of you that have seen our prayer letter for this past month, uh, you know, we've got to go to five different trips while on deputation, and we've seen over 600 souls saved, and I've preached and taught to over uh, 400 and some different pastors, uh, the Word of God, and there's not too many missionaries that get to do that while they're on deputation. So it's been a real blessing to us, but please continue to pray for us. I'd like for you to turn in your Bible to Matthew chapter 5. I thought it was kind of interesting tonight, uh, Brother um, Ivan uh, prayed for us in Spanish, and I was 
working on this lesson one pastor told me he was praying for me and so forth and immediately my mind started going into Spanish and I I thought you know what if I started preaching this in Spanish you know that that row back there they'd start cheering and yelling amen and uh, maybe Miss Dee Dee would but uh, uh, that that'd be interesting so but again being a missionary um, I, I'm very excited for them. Uh, it's, a, it's a great trip for them. It gives them an opportunity to see what happens in other countries of the world. And that's very important for you to get the mind of Christ because if you just center around um, yours and, and the things that I like, then uh, you'll, you'll not take it where it needs to be taken. But anyway, let's look today at Matthew chapter 5. And I want to read just a couple of verses, beginning with verse 14. Let's stand in honor to God's Word. Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, and I'll begin reading with verse 14. In fact, let's just read them together. We're going to read three verses. Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your kindness to us. And Lord, what a privilege it is to have the Word of God. And Lord, we know because of having the Word of God what you expect out of our Christian lives. And so I'd ask uh, this evening as I preach that your Holy Spirit would work through me to speak to the hearts to help each and every one in front of me here tonight. Again, we thank you for your kindness to us. Please be with our pastor and his wife and the team down there in Mexico. Please bless during their uh, evangelistic meeting tonight that many would be saved. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Tonight I want to ask the question, what kind of light are you? What kind of light are you? Now this is somewhat of a simplistic uh, message. When I told Bob about uh, a light, he immediately he started singing, you know, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And he started doing all that. So some of these things you know, but I'm not trying to, um, you know, dazzle you with my fancy footwork here. What I'm trying to do is I want you to think about some things and take an honest uh, look at your life. He says here in verse 14, ye are the light of the world. Ye, he's talking about his disciples, are is a definite thing, it's not you ought to be, or you could be, or you should be, or you might be, or you can be, or you say, I don't want to be, that's not what it says. It says, ye are the light of the world. In John 1 verse 4 it says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. So right away, we have two different classifications. Number one, the light of the world and the light of men. Now, in other passages of the Bible, Jesus also says he is the light of the world. Let me read uh, John chapter 8, verse 12. John chapter 8, verse 12. Then Jesus spake again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So what's the difference then between the light of the world and the light of men? Well, there's a a big difference. And as we look at Matthew chapter 5, again, we think it's a, a small thing, but it's a very important thing. It is a big deal because we must look at the context in which we're reading. Uh, Again, I cannot stress this to you enough. Anything without a context is a pretext, 
And that's how all false doctrines get started. They just take one verse and say, I like that, and I'm going to center everything, all my doctrine around that. And you can't do that. It doesn't work that way. This idea of there is a spark of divinity in all mankind, no, that, that's wrong. That's not according to the Bible. God is in all men, and it must just be developed. No, that's wrong. That's false doctrine. Or you could have like the Mormon doctrine that says, once you spend so much time in eternity, then you eventually graduate up to where you become God as well. We must be careful here what's going on. The light of the world and the light of men. Does it say that you are Jesus? No, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say like the charismatics would say, that you are in the place of Jesus and you're given power to heal, drink strychnine, and play with poisonous snakes. It doesn't say that. So let's not make it say something that it doesn't say. Let's see what it does say. It says in verse 14, ye are the light of the world. Now he goes from the light of the world immediately to a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. So what are we talking about? We're talking about something that is visible. Are you with me? Amen. Okay. Now, can you see Jesus? No, you can't see Jesus. Now, I've heard people say that they have seen Jesus, but um, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people that are, uh, have a sound mind and they want to know what the Bible says. A city is something that you can touch. If, if I uh, go up, well, we're in Grove City. Amen? We're inside the city limits. We can touch the ground out there and say that is in the city. Can you touch Jesus? No, you cannot touch Jesus. A city, the residents of Grove City, the residents of Columbus, are a collective group of people. Now, Jesus does not just save certain people. The Bible says, whosoever will may come. So what we're talking about is we're talking about the people that the Lord Jesus has appointed to be an external testimony for Jesus Christ. Something that they can see, those out there can see with their eyes. So he's talking to those that are saved. He's talking to those they have been given internally the light of men, Jesus Christ. Again, Jesus Christ is not in all men. All men are not uh, brothers and sisters of God, and God is the Father of all. That's not true. That's not in the Bible. Yes, God is the Creator of all, but as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. So only the ones that know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior are sons of God. The light internally is supposed to shine externally so that this light that God gives in a dark world will bring glory to God. Verse 16, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So let me get to the main point of the message. You see, sometimes there's something that happens between the internal light and the external light. The Bible says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So the, the life and the light that gives men uh, the possibility of eternity in heaven is Jesus Christ. But for that light, that light to shine externally through you something else is required and that's the first word in verse 16 let your light so shine before men permit lend allow release pass 
sanction, to give liberty. That's what that word means. Look it up in the dictionary. I'm going to give what's inside of me liberty to work through my life so that others may see on the outside what's taking place on the inside. Some of you today in front of me are not letting that light shine through to others. So for the next few minutes, I'd just like to talk to you about what kind of light are you. Now, there's four basic types of light that we'll discuss tonight. I'm not talking about different types of light bulbs. If you want that information, I guess you probably ought to talk to Brother Anderson. But I'm going to talk about four different kinds of light. Now, the first light is the sunlight. This light exemplifies Jesus. Turn over just a couple pages to the Old Testament. Turn to Malachi chapter 4. Malachi chapter 4. The Bible says, but unto you, uh, Malachi 4.2, but unto you that fear my name shall the Son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Now, the Bible says here, Son, capital S-U-N. Why? Because it's a picture, it's a name for Jesus Christ. It's not an error in your Bible. You don't have any errors in your Bible if you have a King James Bible. How about an amen right there? There's no errors in your Bible if you have a King James Bible. Now, Dr. Carl Hatch, uh, some of you know, knew him. He's in heaven right now. But he was uh, uh, an unbelievable soul winner. And he had statistics that said he won over 20,000 people a year to the Lord. And uh, he would get up and preach, and he'd say, get out your King James Bible, and if you don't have a King James Bible, just get out the hymnal and turn it to Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound, and you sing that, and you'll get more out of it than the book you're holding. Turn to 2 Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1, and we'll read verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well to take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts. The day star, it's a special star. We call it the sun. Jesus Christ is uh, an, an example or a picture in that we see it through the sun. Now, all the other Bibles, all the perverted Bibles, have uh, ruined this verse, and they make Jesus the same as the devil, according to Isaiah 14:12. But that's not it at all. When we look at Revelation chapter 22, Revelation chapter 22. Verse 16, I, Jesus, ha have set mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. So the first type of light that we're talking about is sunlight, and that light is too big for us, and we are not going to be everything that Jesus was here on this earth. Now, I want you to understand this, because some of you are really struggling with this. Yes, you're saved. Yes, you're on your way to heaven, but you're going to falter. You're going to sin. You're going to make mistakes. And there's no point in living in guilt and pity party. Some of you, you're, 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 you're upset all the time because, oh, I've messed up, I made this mistake, I knew better and I shouldn't have done that. Yes, you're right, you shouldn't have done that, but don't live in pity and in discouragement. You will sin, you will falter, 
But when you fall, the secret is to get up. Oh, Dr. Yoder, if you knew what I did this week, I just can't go to church. Man, that's the time to get to church. Well, I don't want to go to the church because they all know that I'm a hypocrite. Let me ask you a question. When, when you messed up at home, did you go to your work the next day? We, we, we have to have a balance in life. We, we try to take our spiritual life and set it aside apart from our physical life. No, we are to live our physical life unto Christ so that we can bring honor and glory to Him. Yes, we mess up. Yes, we sin. But you are not the Son. The Son has 3.832 or times 10 to the 26th power light from the Son in watts. In all reality... It's beyond all calculation to find out what the candle watt power of the sun is. You say, why is that? Because the light as we know it is in lumens measured in meters. So if you want to figure out the lumens of your headlight, you have to go out one meter and measure that. But you can't do that from light from the sun. First of all, you're not going to be able to get one meter away. And second of all, it has to be multiplied by a light years. So, whatever anybody tells you concerning light is a guess anyway. God is, is too big. So, again, when we look at our section in Matthew chapter 5, we can't say, oh, well, it's just talking about Jesus. <laughs> no, because it won't fit in that situation. Please turn to 1 John, just back a few pages. 1 John chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4, and let's look at verse 11. 1 John 4, 11, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. That's something we ought to do is love each other, amen? No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and His love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in Him, and He in us, because He hath given us of His Spirit. Now again, he's talking about the love that we need to show one to another as brothers and sisters in Christ. And then he throws this out to us in verse 12, no man hath seen God at any time. Well, that, that doesn't really fit there if you're talking about um, just God in all of His glory. But again, we're, we have this connection. Why? Because the light that's in us comes from the Holy Spirit that lives inside us. And as we portray that light externally, God the Father is magnified. So as we live our Christian life, we must not... Con not forget the connection between the living Word and the written Word. We can say, I believe the Bible. We can say, I love Jesus. But what is seen on the outside gives evidence of what is on the inside. Boy, that was good right there, wasn't it, Bob? Maybe I need to repeat that. Don't forget the connection between the living Word and the written Word. When I say, I believe the Bible and I believe God, Jesus, and I love Him, what is seen on the outside gives evidence of what is on the inside. I did not say you're not saved. I'm saying that your life may be showing that you disregard the Bible and you don't truly love the Savior. When the sun stops shining, when the sun stops rising, are you listening? When the, when the sun stops rising, only then can you live for self. 
The sun is the picture of the victorious Christian life. You said, oh, well, Dr. Yoder, you just said the sun is another name for Jesus. It is. But our lives are to bring honor and glory to Him. We have been bought with a price or not to live for ourselves. And He said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a picture of the victorious Christian life every single day. Death to self and darkness rising again every day walking in newness of life. What a wonderful thing. But now, the world, the unsaved world doesn't know that. They're, they're trying to figure out where they came from. That's the sun. The second type of light is a candle or a lamp. A candle or a lamp. Now, we use, we use uh, lamps today, and uh, we don't typically use candles in our house for light. Uh, back in the day when they were doing... Um, surgeries and so forth back in the turn of the last century they would use a lot of mirrors to try to increase that light but now through technology we have lamps and this is the right kind of a light this is the kind of a the light that a Christian should be why because the only thing that's necessary is you need to get plugged in Turn in your Bible to Psalms 119. Psalms 119, and many of you know this verse. Verse 105. Psalms 119, verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Turn to Proverbs chapter 13. Proverbs chapter 13. Verse 9, The light of the righteous rejoiceth, but the lamp of the wicked shall be put out. Chapter 20. Chapter 20, please. Chapter 20, verse 20. Whoso curseth, curseth his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. Now we find out here that lamp it means a couple of different things. Actually, it means a lot of different things. So uh, when you look at that verse and those words specifically uh, in Hebrew, it tells you a lot of different things. Now that's why the King James Bible pick the word lamp, because it's correct every single time. If you use some of the other words that come from Hebrew, it's not right. So it would have to be a different word. But believe me, folks, you have the right Bible if you have the King James Bible. Those, those translators that did that translation work were the best translators in the entire world at that time. And since that time, your English Bible has been purified seven times past that. The lamp means illumination, but it can also mean happiness, and it can also mean life. Thy word is a lamp, happiness unto my feet, and a light unto my path. It illuminates the way that I walk. Hey, listen to you. Listen, listen to me tonight. Some of you are not portraying the Lord Jesus Christ in a just manner. I, I'm not... Th those of you that see me at work from time to time, Bob does, and this Bob over here, and Scotty, and some other t times uh, other people do, and I'm not one of these people that have one of these big smiles on all the time. How you doing today, brother? I I'm not that way. But... I'm not going to use certain personality traits as an excuse for dragging other people down. How you doing today, brother? Well, if you only knew what I'm going through. No thanks, man. I don't want to know. Hey, 
Listen, we, we have to portray that we're the lamp that's in our life. The Bible says the word light, that lo, the word light there in Hebrew is the same thing in every single one of those three verses that we looked at, and it means to glisten. And it tells us here in verse uh, 20, His lamp shall be put out. That means extinguished or quenched. If our, if our life is not what it is, it should be as far as portraying our Savior that gave us eternal life, we're, we're, we're messing up. That's what our life is for, to bring honor and glory to Jesus Christ. And when we're trapped and we're surrounded and we're overcome with the problems of this world, listen, we're living in the flesh. We're not walking in the Spirit as we should. Now, I'm not going to get up and say life's all peaches and cream because it's not but the Bible makes it pretty clear that our life is supposed to be a lamp now Bob could you help me back there we kill these lights for just a second? See, our life is supposed to be on a hill that cannot be hid. And when we turn this on, it's bright to all those that see it. Hey, I'm just asking you tonight, what, what is your light like? What kind of light are you? Again, we are not the sun. We are not Jesus. If you looked straight into the sun, you'd, you'd, you'd ruin all the nerves in your eyes and you'd go blind. One time I watched a, uh, an eclipse of the sun. This was years ago. I watched an eclipse of the sun. But I had to put on this welding helmet. <laughs> it was super dark. You couldn't, if you turned a regular light bulb on, you couldn't see it. But it had enough, enough protection that I could stand out in the sun and watch that uh, eclipse. You're not that way. You're, you're not Jesus. But what you are is you're a lamp. And if we could make it a little darker in here, we can't. But if we could, this, this would guide your way just fine. And that's the kind of light that you're supposed to be. Thank you, Bob. I said the only difference is, for some people, is you're not plugged into the right power source. Did you read your Bible today? Did you pray? There's some people that could be here tonight, but they've missed church again. We need to let this power flow through us at soul winning. There's an important fact concerning electricity, and that is the, the greater the draw, the more power that will come to it. That's why people are always worried about surges, you know, buying surge protectors and all that kind of stuff. Why? Because when it calls for power, it, it can surge through. And when we exercise, as the Bible says, the spirituality that's in us, by leading other people to Jesus Christ, and by teaching them the Word of God, we get drained, but, but because of that, we have more power that comes our way. And there are some people that they just go around in circles over and over and over again in their Christian life. Why? Because there's no reason for any change in their life. I tell you, I love Brother Wallace. And if you talk to him very long, he's going to start talking to you about faith. Why? Because as a Christian, you can't see the things that God has in your path. And to veer from that path is wrong. We must stay on the path. Just like God told Joshua, we're not to go to the right or to the left. We're to continue on. 
But there's times when we're going to get drained and we must get plugged into the source of power. Read your Bible. Pray. Don't miss church. Go soul winning. Tell people of Jesus Christ. You say, well, Dr. Yoder, when you go out soul winning, you, you, you know all the answers to the questions. Well, the, one of the reasons why I, why I know a lot of answers to the questions is because when I first started going soul winning, I didn't know the answers to all the questions. So, amen, Brother Ted, you just start talking to more people and learn more and more answers to the questions. So we have the sunlight, which is not you, that's Jesus Christ. But God wants you to be a lamp that shines through your actions to an external testimony of Jesus Christ. The third kind of light is what we would call a flashlight. It can be a help, but you see, this flashlight, it always needs help. Somebody has to hold it. Bob, if you turn that off for us. Okay. Now, if I shine this flashlight on, yeah, it can guide right exactly what I'm doing at the time. And it can help you a little bit. But it's not going to help Philemon in the back. He can't see anything with this. Even if it was completely dark, whereas the lamp would. I want you to go back, if you would please, to Matthew chapter 5. Go ahead and flip the lights back on for us, Bob. Thank you. Matthew chapter 5. How many have enjoyed the service so far? Raise your hand. Hey, man, that's good. I hope you enjoy this next point. Matthew chapter 5. Let's look at verse 15. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. You know, one of the problems with flashlight Christians is they're, they're out of order. You see, they want, they want to be a good testimony for Jesus Christ, but... The Bible says here first that we need to be a good testimony in our own house. You see, Mom and Dad, your kids know you. One of the reasons why your kids are going wild is because when somebody tells you about something from the Bible, you go wild. Some of you, and again, I, I love you, and I'm not saying this to make anybody mad, and I'm not saying this to lose any friends tonight, because I do love you. And if you know me, you know I'm, I'm not just making that up. I'd do whatever I could for you. But some of you, in the three years that I've been here, you have not made any spiritual changes in your life. None. If you had children... And they didn't make any changes physically in three years. You take them to the doctor and say, that kid's got a problem. The Bible says that if we are going to be the testimony as we should be, the first thing that should be affected to bring honor and glory to our Savior is what happens at home. There's many of you here in here tonight that really don't even know me that well. But there is one that does. It's not Andy. It's the, lady, it's the lady behind you. And my wife ought to be the first one to say, I know Dave, he's a good Christian. Verse 16, Let your light so shine before men. Second, after the house. Again, a lot of times we think that God is not, uh, 
using me the way I want to be used. God's not empowering me the way I want to be used. Because we have things in our own personal life out of order. If, if you are by yourself, man, you ought to be singing and praising the Lord in your house. Why? Because there's nobody there to stop you. But you're going to waste time, hour after hour, looking at the stupid bubble tube or thinking about things that you weren't able to accomplish. Now, what is that going to help? And those of you that do have a spouse, those of you that are, do have kids, live your life, be a good testimony to your kids. Is there th things that come out of your mouth that you don't want your kids to hear? You know why most people smoke? I don't smoke. But you know why most people smoke? Because their parents smoked. They, they, they see that testimony. Most Christians are operating in reverse. Teenagers are more concerned about uh, their friends than they are their parents. Are you listening, teenagers? The first thing that you should want to do is you should want to have a good testimony of Jesus Christ before your parents. Finally, somebody talks you into going soul winning or doing something for the Lord, and you wonder why it just doesn't seem to, to fit with you. Well, Dr. Yoder, it just doesn't work. No, the problem is, is you don't work. You, you won't do it according to God's order, and that's what I'm trying to help you with tonight. If you want God's blessings on your life, you get things according to the Word of God. And that's where the blessings come from. The Bible said concerning Jesus Christ, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye Him. Well, Dr. Yoder, nobody will listen to me. Well, probably because you don't look like Jesus Christ on the outside. First of all, in your home, and then second, among other people. What is the family unit? Well, we get that from Genesis. And we're not going to go through all that tonight, but for sure, it's a trinity. The husband, the wife, and the Jesus Christ relationship. If you don't have that, you're going to have a hole in your family. You see, this, this flashlight here, it always needs help. Somebody always has to hold it. And it, it, it always needs a push. You see, you have to click it to get it going. Half the time, when I use this out in my garage, I have to beat it over the head to keep it working. Let me ask you, in your Christian life, does, does somebody always have to get you going to do something for the Lord? Half the time, when I, when I need the, the flashlight, then the, it's, it's out of power. And I've got to change the batteries. Hey, so-and-so, would you come with me soul winning today? The Lord's impressed upon my heart that we need to go talk to somebody on the prayer list. And how do you respond? Um, I can't right now. You say you can't right now and you make a flimsy excuse, but the reason is, is you're low on power. Or sometimes our mode of operation is, oh, all right. Can you imagine that when you were in the Marines? Wallace, get over here. <sighs> oh, all right. He'll, your drill sergeant will come and give you a push, amen? But we as Christians are not supposed to be that way. Let me get to the last one here. The last one. Bob, if you'd hit the lights one more time for us, please. We have fire starter Christians.
fire starter Christians. You see, of the sun and the lamp and the flashlight, of those three, this fourth one, the fire starter, is the dimmest of all the lights. Thanks, Bob. This, this light also works the shortest in time. If you'd hold this down for a while, pretty soon all the fluid would be out of it, and it wouldn't start at all. But you see, the problem with the fire starter, when you're comparing it to the Christian life, is actually, it starts, not by, not by flipping this button here, but inside there, there is a flint that's activated, that's struck. And so this fire starter, as we relate it to the Christian life, is motivated to work by punishment. It's struck, and the fire starts. Yes, this can be a help at times. If it was an emergency situation, this would help me. Not only that, it does start my grill, amen? <laughs> but you see, some Christians, they, they are motivated and they work for the Lord only based upon punishment. If you don't do this, God will strike you down. and He'll come after you. He punishes the children that He loves. Ooh, I better do that. You see, that, that, is, that is true to a point. But if, if you have to live your life that way, your t external testimony for Jesus Christ is not going to be very luminous. It's not going to be glittering very much, is it, Brother Ted? Sometimes it's the opposite. If you don't do this, bad will happen to you. You see, a lot of times, people that are fire starter Christians, they are that way because their life is so clogged with sin that the Lord can't shine through. I, I, I come before you tonight as honest as I can, and, and I want to tell you that I, I want the Lord to use me. I, I, I really believe, Miss Barham, that someday Dave Yoder is going to stand in front of the Lord. And he's going to give an account for the time that he was given as a Christian. Now, if I have a choice between living this way or living like that, drawing more men to Christ, as the Bible says, if I be lifted up, draw all men unto myself. That's what I would like to be. Hey, I want to ask you tonight, and, and you've been a very good audience listening to me. I, I mean that. I, I go into some churches you can't imagine. They're good churches too, but people don't care. It doesn't take very long to find out whether who, somebody cares or whether they don't care. I'm asking you, what kind of light are you? You can't be the sun. You'll never be Jesus. You're going you're gonna to have imperfections till the day you die, and your salvation is absolutely complete with a new body that is impossible for us to sin, and we're conformed completely to the image of Jesus Christ. But between now and then, wouldn't you like to be this kind of a Christian? A city that's set on a hill that other people can see, and that's going to honor and glorify the one who owns that city, Jesus Christ. Let's have every head bowed and every eye closed. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight and we humble ourselves uh, because we know in your presence, like in the presence of the Son, that no man could see you and live. But because of Jesus Christ and his shed blood, we can come before you boldly to the throne of grace. I thank you so much for salvation.